everybody. My name is Larry, and you're watching the Old Gazer channel. Uh, for those of you who perhaps haven't watched the channel before, let me just briefly tell you what we're all about. Uh, this is a channel uh, directed towards beginning or inexperienced amateur astronomers. And the goal of the channel is to try to give some practical advice, you know, some basic information, and hopefully a little bit of encouragement and inspiration that might be helpful to those of you who are beginning this journey into this wonderful hobby. So that's who we are, and that's what we're all about. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, let's get, uh, uh, get on with today's video. Uh, so what are we going to do today? Well, uh, in today's video, I am going to try to, uh, to go out to, and take you with me out into the field uh, tonight, and I'm going to try to find and take some pictures of a galaxy. Now, why am I going to do that? Well, uh, you know, I've been preaching throughout this series of videos that b b amateur astronomy is all about patience and perseverance and those kind of things. And the fact is that I have my track record in trying to get a decent, recognizable picture of a galaxy is, uh, in a word, abysmal. <laughs> I mean, every time I have not been able to get a good picture of a galaxy, despite repeated efforts to do so. Uh, I've tried, of course, uh, several times to get a picture of the Andromeda galaxy. And uh, the last time out, I thought I finally had succeeded. I took, I don't know, something well over 100 uh, time exposure photographs of Andromeda. But when I uh, brought them back uh, and, and transferred them to my computer and started trying to stack them and edit them, I discovered that there was a severe gradient in every one of those 100 plus pictures. Uh, an oblique line just ran right down uh, through the image, and it was extremely light on one side and extremely dark on the other. And uh, I finally figured out that uh, the, the culprit had been a security light, maybe 50 or 60 meters away. I thought that the dew shield on the telescope was going to shield uh, that uh, localized light pollution away, uh, but I was wrong. Uh, it uh, A portion of that uh, light hit the... Uh, uh, the, the objective lens of the telescope causing that severe gradient and it was so bad that no amount of editing uh, uh, would make it go away. So it turned out to be an unusable photograph. So here I am still without having ever taken what I consider to be a recognizable picture of a galaxy. So in the spirit of moving forward and trying again, you know, if, if at first and a second and third and fourth and fifth you don't succeed, try, try again. <laughs> That's what I'm going to try to do tonight. And I'm going to let you participate in that with me if you choose to do so. Uh, I'm going to go out tonight and try to find and uh, take photographs of uh, Bode's Galaxy. That's a galaxy that's in the constellation Ursa, Ursa Major. Uh, and it's a, it's a very symmetrical, a very beautiful galaxy, uh, very faint, very far away. It's about 12 million light years away. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's what I'm going to try. And, uh, and when I say I'm going to have you with me, what I mean is that most of this video is going to be taken when we're out there in the field uh, at my viewing site, actually uh, taking these photographs. Now, uh, I know I said a few videos back that uh, trying to do one of these videos out at my viewing site uh, was something that I was not going to try to do again. You know, I tried this once and it was a disaster. It was so bad that I never uh, posted the video. Uh, I just couldn't quite get my old gazer mentality, you know, those, uh, that, those senior moments uh, came uh, way too often there and I never could get it together and figure out exactly how to do that. It requires some multitasking, and I guess when you get to be my age, multitasking is something that becomes more and more beyond your reach <laughs> the older you get. So I, I decided that I would never attempt to do that again, but uh, here I am. I've changed my mind, and I'm going to uh, try to take you out there with me uh, tonight and uh, let you, uh, you know, sort of go along for the ride while I'm trying to find and photograph Bode's Galaxy. 
So that's what we're going to do. It's going to be a, a beautiful night for it. The forecast calls for clear skies, very comfortable temperatures. Uh, shouldn't have any problems with dew uh, until one or two o'clock in the morning, and I plan not to be out there that long. So we're going to give it a shot. Now, Bode's galaxy is not very big in terms of the angular size that it uh, appears in the night sky. Uh, it's, uh, I think the, the major dimension is about 22 arc minutes, perhaps, which means that it's uh, less, than, less, than the si less than half the size of the full moon. So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to appear pretty small in the field of view, so you might presume from that that I'll probably be using this 8-inch telescope here. Uh, and, and indeed, uh, I could do that, and uh, the galaxy would look pretty good in the field of view of this telescope. But uh, actually, I'm not going to be using my 8-inch telescope uh, to try to do this tonight. I'm going to be using this small 80-millimeter refractor instead, and for three reasons, and here's what they are. First of all, uh, uh, Bode's Nebula, Bode's Galaxy, pardon me, is uh, very faint, uh, and uh, so uh, this is a much faster telescope. This is an F5 telescope as opposed to this F10 scope over here. So this one is capable of gathering more light per unit of time, and I think I'm going to need that uh, given that uh, this ga galaxy is faint and given that this alt azimuth tracking mount here uh, has some practical limitations on the length of exposures that you can take. So I'm going to go with this uh, uh, telescope uh, partially because it's faster and I can gather more light per unit of time. Second reason I want to use this one is because it's got a much greater field of view than this one. And as it happens, there is another galaxy uh, in the same vicinity as uh, uh, Bode's galaxy. Uh, and that is galaxy M82. Uh, and, uh, you know, they are uh, close enough together that I'll be able to get both of them, I think, within the field of view of this telescope. And so, uh, you know, I'm going to get really ambitious and try to get two galaxies in the same picture tonight. Two for the price of one, okay? Now, that's really stretching things a little bit. I, I, would, I have never been able to get one galaxy decently before, much less two, but I'm going to give it a try. So we're going to try that. The third and more practical reason that I'm going with this telescope tonight is because I have from time to time some issues with my lower back, and I'm going through a period right now of having, <laughs> having that flare up a little bit. And of course, this is a much smaller and more lightweight and more maneuverable uh, optical tube than this one would be. And so uh, I, I'm gonna give my back a break and go with this one tonight. So for those reasons, I'm gonna be using this optical tube on this alt azimuth tracking mount uh, out there attempting to find and get some photographs of Bode's Nebula. Now, let me say a word here to those of you who are not really into taking pictures of night sky objects. Uh, I know some of you are not interested in that. You, you, don't, you would rather not do that. Uh, you're more uh, visual astronomers. Uh, you uh, enjoy much more just looking at objects, uh, viewing them through the eyepiece of your telescope. And, uh, you know, I would prefer to do that as well. Uh, you know, I would, I would like to just go out and be able to view objects in the night sky right through the eyepiece of my telescope. But unfortunately, uh, given the level of light pollution where I live, and this is probably true for most of you watching this video, even with this 8-inch telescope, which has some pretty decent light gathering uh, ability, I just can't see most of the deep sky objects when I try to look at them through the eyepiece of my telescope. Uh, I can see the, uh, you know, the uh, Orion Nebula and perhaps the Pleiades open star cluster, maybe hints of a few others. But for the most part, when I try to go out and look at one of these deep sky objects from here and the place where I live by just looking through the eyepiece of a telescope, all I can see is a very indistinct gray uh, indication that something is there. Uh, no, uh, no way to, uh, to recognize it as a galaxy or a nebula or a star cluster. Just a little faint, fuzzy gray spot there. And so uh, uh, as much as I would like to go out and view these things, 
uh, with my telescope, just looking at it through an eyepiece, I just can't do it. So if I'm going to be able to see an image of these uh, deep sky objects, which I certainly want to do, I have no choice but to take long exposure photographs. And of course, we've, we've discussed this, uh, this uh, point uh, several times in the last few videos. That's why I have learned to take uh, long exposure photographs uh, through a, a telescope because that's the only way I have of being able to view an image that I have actually obtained of these deep sky objects. And so if you if you're, don't like uh, uh, taking photographs through a telescope, if you're not into that and you just don't want to do that, uh, you might want to, uh, to uh, forego this video and go do something better with your time. But please understand that uh, I'm doing this and sharing this with you uh, and going through this exercise of taking these photographs because that's what I have to do here where I live, given the equipment that I have in order to get any uh, reasonable view at all of these objects I'm trying to observe in the night sky. So, uh, so maybe if you're not really into that, you might still, uh, you know, enjoy this video a little bit. If you're one of those who is already taking pictures or, or who is moving in that direction, then hopefully you will gain something in this video somewhere along the way <laughs> that might be helpful to you. That is the goal and that is the hope. And so that's what we're going to do. So I think that's probably enough uh, introductory stuff. We're going out uh, tonight uh, to try to find and take some pictures of Bode's galaxy. And so I'm going to, to stop right here and we'll resume this video uh, out there at my viewing site uh, uh, tonight. See you then. Well, guys, I don't know how well you can see this or how good you can hear me, but as promised, here we are uh, out at a viewing site for a night's viewing. Uh, beautiful night, clear in all directions. I see no hints of clouds, uh, very comfortable temperatures, uh, and uh, I believe it's going to be good seeing tonight too because we've had a period of rain here when it's rained harder than in some time. And now that that's passed, we're drying out, and today the air just had that scrub look to it. Uh, very clear, visibility very, very good. So I am very hopeful that everything is going to work right tonight. And uh, so just a beautiful night to be out here, and welcome uh, out, everybody. Uh, as you can see, I've got everything set up here. And uh, uh, what I need to do now is to align the telescope. I have to input my uh, uh, coordinates of latitude and longitude. Uh, I have to tell it the date and the time. And then I have to get two stars, two bright stars, centered in the eyepiece of the telescope. And once I've done that, the mount will be able to develop a model of the night sky from which it will be able to find and then track objects as we go through the evening. So. Rather than go through all that process, which, uh, you know, would be a little boring probably as I stumble through that, uh, I'm going to, uh, to just uh, stop, pause right here and get everything aligned and all set up, and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, guys, I don't know how well you can see this out here in the dark with uh, only using my uh, cell phone to do these videos uh, is a, a little bit, uh, you know, amateur probably, but here we are. Uh, I've aligned the telescope now. I didn't have any real problems with getting a good alignment. I used the stars Vega and Arcturus uh, to do the alignment and it worked pretty well. Uh, I've also taken some test shots. I'm, I, I, I told the telescope to find the M81 Bode's Galaxy and it did and it's now uh, within the field of view and I've taken some test shots and believe it or not I think I have discovered that 30 seconds and we're going to be able to get away with a 30 second exposure which really surprises me uh, let me uh, pause here for a moment and show you uh, as best i can what's on the live view screen of the camera so there is a 30 second photograph of the uh, m81 bodes uh, galaxy and also its partner there it looks like m82 perhaps over to the right and uh and uh, that's a 30 second exposure at ISO 1600, I believe. Let's zoom in a little bit closer 
and see if these stars look like they're trailer trailing. I don't see any real star trails there of any significance. I'm gonna back off to maybe 20 seconds and we're gonna call that our, our, our shooting uh, uh, shutter speed of the night. So I just wanted you to see what that looked like. All right, after a little further consideration, I've decided to back off to 20 seconds. Seems to look a little bit better, certainly with a little better background. So uh, we're gonna take, uh, I'm gonna try to get one hour's worth of total integration. And since I'm taking three pictures uh, per minute, that's gonna be 180 pictures, uh, if my math is right. So we're going to just set the timer and let it get started. And uh, we'll talk about uh, some things a little bit here while that's uh, taking the pictures. But here is my remote shutter release from the camera. And I'm going to start it, lock it in place. And we're gonna start taking some 20 second exposures of Bode's Galaxy. So here we are, our uh, telescope, uh, the camera attached to the telescope is busy taking uh, one photo of uh, B, uh, uh, pardon me, M81 every 20 seconds. And uh, I need to set my smartphone uh, 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 alarm here in a minute for one hour. So we'll get uh, hopefully 180 pictures at 20 seconds, ISO 1600. Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, Bode's galaxy a little bit while the pictures are being taken. Uh, it's a in very interesting one. We, we talked uh, uh, perhaps in the introduction that uh, for us in the Northern Hemisphere, it never sets. It uh, uh, never rises. Uh, never sets. It's in the sky uh, all the time. Uh, it's uh, in the constellation Urs Ursa Major, and if you don't have a go-to telescope that can find it for you, if you draw a line, uh, you know you know how the pointers, stars, and the Big Dipper point directly at Polaris? Go along that line from, uh, from the Big Dipper towards Polaris about 10% of the way, and then go down a little bit, and somewhere right in that region is where you'll find M81. So uh, uh, it's a. Uh, it was originally called Bode's Nebula. It was discovered by a man named Johann Bode back in the 1700s. And like most other things that they saw back then, you couldn't resolve any stars. Certainly couldn't see any of the detail. Uh, he just thought it was sort of a cloudy thing, like a nebula. So it was called Bode's Nebula, and it's still called uh, that at times today. I guess. Uh, you know, tradition dies hard. <laughs> but Bode's Nebula is actually Bode's Galaxy. It's about uh, 12 million light years away. And uh, it contains, uh, uh, I don't, it's, it's, it's considered, I believe, to be a little bit more massive than our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Uh, I'm not sure about that. You can uh, look that up and check me on that. But uh, it's a, a, a very symmetrical spiral galaxy. I doubt if we'll get you know a, a really good image of it here given the limitations of my equipment but uh, we'll uh, we'll take all these pictures and stack them together in deep sky stacker and see what we can do with that stacked image and see if we can get an idea of what Bode's galaxy uh, really looks like so uh, if this were winter if it was cold out here or blazing hot even I'd probably get in my car and get comfortable right now with heat or air conditioning as, as required uh, while this is doing that. But it's a very, very pleasant night out here tonight. Very clear, the temperature's very pleasant. So while I sit and wait for this to, to go on, I'm gonna take my trusty binoculars and just take some looks around the sky and see what kind of interesting things I can find just doing some viewing through binoculars. So. Uh, uh, we'll come back uh, at some point in this process uh, when, these, uh, when we've got uh, an hour's worth of pictures of the Bode's uh, uh, galaxy. And I'll see you then. Okay, well, let me explain what I'm doing right here. Uh, we're about 25 minutes in. Uh, and, uh, you know, I always like to stop the process two or three times during one of these uh, sessions 
and check the last picture that was taken. And the, the purpose of that, of course, is to make sure that everything still looks in focus, to make sure that nothing has drifted out of the field of view. I mean, this tracking mount is tracking bows as it moves across the sky, but that tracking is not always perfect, and sometimes things can move a little too much. So I'm just uh, gonna stop the process here, take a look at that last picture that was taken, and see if anything needs to be adjusted a little bit. I have to wait for it to take that last picture. <laughs> there we go. And I'm, I'm looking at that and I don't see anything really uh, uh, out of... Let me take another picture here real quickly. Uh, the, the, there's some things about this one that I don't like. Let me look at a, a previous one, perhaps. Yeah, I think that last one was just, uh, you know, I moved something while it was taking that last picture. So I'm looking at the one before that and things basically still look good. Uh, the Nebula and its partner over here, M82, are not in the center of the field of view, but I think they're enough in the field of view that I'm not concerned about it and I'm not gonna to try to adjust anything at this point. So uh, things looking pretty good. We're just gonna continue with the process. And I'll go back to my binoculars. All right, guys. Uh, we have finished, of course. Uh, uh, we've got the uh, the hours worth plus some uh, of Bode's Nebula. We'll see what the results are later on. It's such a wonderful night out here that I'm staying out a little bit longer. I'm just playing around some, uh, practicing the craft, as I have uh, said many, many times that you have to do when you uh, pursue this hobby. Uh, I am actually taking some pictures of uh, M5 right now, which is a globular star cluster, one of the major globular star clusters, very beautiful. Uh, I'm unfortunately looking in the wrong direction of the sky now, towards the south and southeast where there's a major metropolitan area. And from what I've seen so far from the pictures that are coming up on my live view screen, they are not the best uh, images. Uh, and so I'm not really Hopeful. I'm going to have to wait for better time, better circumstances, but I am, you know, just going to take some pictures of, uh, of M5 and, and see what they look like. I, I really love uh, uh, those globular star clusters. I think they're really majestic, really beautiful, and so I'll take some here and stack those together and see if I can get a at least semi-decent image of that as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting a twofer tonight. Uh, so uh, I will... Uh, uh, I'm not going to stay much longer though because dew is starting to become a problem. Now I didn't expect that. According to everything that I read, the prediction was that dew wouldn't start to become, uh, uh, you know, wouldn't start to form until about two in the morning or something. But it's here and it's in abundance and I'm getting a pretty good coating of dew on just about every surface out here. So I'm not going to stay much longer, uh, and I'm seriously going to start thinking about getting some dew heaters <laughs> because this is really a, a common problem that I have uh, uh, quite frequently, and uh, that's going to drive me home uh, before too long here, but I'm going to stay around and, and play a little bit, and I uh, uh, just thought I'd give you an update of what's going on. We have our pictures uh, now of Bode's Nebula to stack and hopefully come up with something that will at least <laughs> show us a, a, a hint or a shadow of what Bode's Nebula, or pardon me, Bode's Galaxy is supposed to look like. I hope so. So uh, anyway, that's where we are. And uh, so I'm going to pause right here. I'll probably have a couple of more words right before I head home and just to tell you what's coming next, but just wanted to give you that update. All right, guys, uh, I am packed up and ready to call it a night. It's uh, uh, after 12.30 a.m. now, so I've been out here for about four hours, uh, but I have enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, 
Uh, it was a little bit too uh, light still to set everything up when I got here, so I had an opportunity to take my time setting everything up. And then when it got dark, of course, I aligned to the telescope and found Bode's Nebula and started tracking it. And we wound up taking about 200 uh, 20 second exposures of the nebula, or pardon me, the galaxy, and, uh, and, and then called it quits. So we'll see, uh, we'll see whether or not I have finally broken the curse and managed to get a, at least a semi-decent picture of a galaxy. I hope so, but uh, uh, I am not, uh, I'm not counting on it because I have, a, as I said earlier in this video, an abysmal track record of trying to get photos of galaxies. And uh, so we'll see, we'll see uh, when, when it all comes out. I spent a lot of time after that uh, doing other things. I actually wound up taking over 115 uh, second exposures of the M5 uh, uh, globular star cluster in the constellation Serpens. I'm not too uh, optimistic on that one though. I was looking directly towards the south and southeast into a big dome of sky glow from a metropolitan area that lies not too far in that direction. So uh, uh, not real hopeful about that one. We'll just have to see what happens uh, with that. But I will, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, so uh, thank you for being part of this. Uh, wonderful, wonderful evening. It's clear very comfortable temperatures. The dew did start to become a problem around 11 or o'clock or so in the evening. Uh, and I've got a good coating of dew on everything now, uh, uh, but uh, it was worth it. A great, great evening, uh, practicing, enjoying this wonderful hobby. Glad you could be along for a part of it. I hope you weren't bored. I hope you uh, maybe enjoyed it a little bit. And uh, most importantly, I hope maybe you got a little something out of it that might be of help to you somewhere along the way as you pursue this hobby. So what happens next? Well, I'll head home and secure all this equipment. Sometime tomorrow, I'll transfer all these uh, pictures over to my computer. Uh, I'll uh, stack them using Deep Sky Stacker and hopefully get a good stacked image out of that. And then I'll pull that stacked image into a photo editor, probably Affinity Photo, and see how much detail I can bring out of that stacked image. And when I get all of that done, uh, I'll come back to you again and show you the final result of what we've tried to do here tonight. And we'll see whether I've succeeded in getting, a, you know, at least a, a semi-reasonable picture of a galaxy for the first time, <laughs> which would be a, a, a big triumph for me. So we'll see how it works out. Uh, so we'll do that. And, uh, and then uh, we'll, I'll, I'll have a few closing comments to wrap this one up. But thanks for being along and, uh, and we'll uh, take this one up a little bit later. So here we are, pretty much at the end of the process. Uh, uh, I have taken all those pictures of Bode's Nebula uh, that were taken uh, last night. Uh, I've uh, uh, stacked those pictures in uh, Deep Sky Stacker uh, after eliminating, uh, by the way, we wound up with 189 total pictures. I wound up eliminating quite a few of those because of airplane uh, uh, passing through the field of view and that kind of thing. But uh, I did uh, stack the remainder together and uh, uh, created a stacked image, which I then pulled into Affinity Photos and edited a little bit. I mean, I haven't, I didn't do a, a major editing job on it. I just, you know, uh, did a few things to try to pull out some detail. And before I show you what that final image looks like, uh, maybe make some comments here. It's sort of a, a good news, bad news uh, sort of a situation here. The bad news is I didn't get a very good picture, which doesn't surprise me because I never get a good picture of a galaxy <laughs> and probably never will, <laughs> apparently. Uh, it's, uh, there are some things that I can see in retrospect that I should have done differently. Uh, for example, I, I should have taken more pictures. I probably should have taken a couple of hours of integration rather than just one hour, because the way this stacking thing works, the more uh, pictures that you've got to stack, the more data you've got to work with, and therefore the better your final stacked image ought to be. Second thing I would have done differently is I probably would have used 
this eight inch telescope. Uh, it doesn't, uh, uh, the picture didn't appear very well in the field of view taken with this telescope. And this telescope has better light gathering capability and better optics inside it. So all the way around in terms of the appearance of the image and the overall characteristics of the image, I can understand now that I probably should have taken the, the photos of Bode's galaxy with this telescope rather than this one. So the next, so I've learned, you know, that's the important thing, I guess. Uh, I've learned uh, uh, how to get, hopefully, how to get a better image next time. And uh, so when I go out next time, I'll shoot for more integration time and using this telescope rather than this one. Uh, now, uh, uh, the good news is, uh, as, uh, as bad as the picture that you're going to see is, it is, believe it or not, uh, the best picture that I've yet taken of a galaxy. <laughs> At least you can see the core. You can see some indication of the spiral arms around the core. And, uh, you know, so uh, I've made some progress. I've got a long ways to go, but, uh, you know, I'm making progress. This one is an improvement over the other pictures I've tried to take of galaxies. So uh, 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 the point of all of this, of course, is that uh, in amateur astronomy, uh, you have to be patient and you have to persevere and you have to keep trying again. Moving forward, I think I took a step forward with this little exercise. Got the best picture of a galaxy that I've got yet. You, when you see it uh, in just a second, you'll see how far I've got to go. But I, am, I, I took a step forward and that's the important thing. Uh, so, uh, uh, I want to take a look now. I'll let you take a look at the image I took of Bode's galaxy. And, uh, you know, you can see the pros and cons of the picture. And then we'll come back for a final word. So here's the uh, picture then. Now, this hasn't been cropped. Uh, you know, I, I expected it would be small like this because of the wide field of view uh, from the 80 millimeter telescope. And... Uh, uh, you know, uh, there it is, a pretty good star feel, pretty good color in the stars. Uh, you can see the, the core here, and you can see an indication here of the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, spiral arms of the galaxy. So, uh, and over here, of course, is M82. So I was successful in getting two galaxies in one picture here. Now, this could be made quite a bit better with some more careful, uh, precise editing, maybe a different approach to editing. But, uh, you know, it, uh, as small and uh, unimpressive as it is, this is indeed the best picture that I have taken yet uh, of a galaxy, and that's a step forward for me. And uh, so that's the end result of all of our work and taking all those pictures of Bode's galaxy. Now, uh, I mentioned in the, earlier in the video that I spent some time near the end of that session uh, taking some pictures of M5, the globular star cluster in the constellation uh, Serpens, or the Serpent. I wasn't very hopeful about that one because I was uh, uh, photographing right into the teeth of, uh, uh, of a big, glow, a big uh, dome of sky glow due to a, ma a major metropolitan area lying in, the, in that direction. But I did take uh, uh, some 15-second exposures, and I stacked them together and uh, pulled them into an editor. And I just thought, since I had mentioned it and since I did spend some time doing that out there, uh, that I would show you, uh, you know, what a very, very slightly edited version of that uh, star cluster looked like. And that is it. Uh, M5. Uh, well, one of the uh, one of the uh, major uh, globular star clusters uh, viewable to us here in the northern hemisphere, and uh, turned out better actually than I thought. Uh, maybe a uh, maybe a little better, and uh, so you know, with some more editing, uh, it could be made even better. So I uh, just thought I'd let you uh, uh, take a look at that uh, at that picture that I did uh, of uh, M5. So uh, that's. Uh, uh, give you one more look at these. Uh, there's our picture of Bode's uh, galaxy here and M82 over here. And, we, and again, not cropped. I'm not sure what that would look like uh, uh, cropped. Uh, but uh, here is uh, again the uh, uh, one, more, one more time the view of M5, the globular star cluster. So that is the uh, 
the result, the lightly edited result of stacking all the pictures that uh, we took out there last night. Okay, so what's the takeaway from this particular video? Well, in retrospect, <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know whether it was whether you might have gained anything from it or learned anything from it or not. Uh, to me, the, the lasting thing that I hope you'll take away from this video is that you just have to keep going. Uh, you know, uh, trying to get a decent picture of a, of a galaxy has been, uh, you know, something that I've just not done well and I've always been disappointed with, but I do feel like I've taken a little bit of a step forward. So, uh, you know, that's what the hobby is all about, being patient, uh, uh, persevering, uh, moving forward, uh, trying to improve and enhance your knowledge and trying to overcome obstacles and, and, and you know, move forward. And, uh, you know, there are rewards at the end. I mean, this is a very rewarding hobby if you're willing to put something into it. So uh, uh, I hope you will appreciate that after having seen this video. And uh, that's the ho I hope that's the message that you'll take away. Sometimes you have to have incremental improvement. You just, just don't go out on some given night and everything goes perfectly and you come back with, uh, you know, a night that you're satisfied with. Uh, that's just not the way it works. Uh, you have to keep working at it. You have to keep practicing. And I'll keep practicing. Next time I'll use a different telescope and I'll take more pictures and uh, and I'll see, uh, I'll, I'll see if that works better. And then I'll go from there. So at any rate, Hope you got something out of this video. Uh, uh, hope you enjoyed it a, a little bit, at least. And uh, uh, so we'll wrap this one up and I'll be back soon with another video. And until then, just thank you so much as always for watching. And let me wish all of you uh, clear skies.